Hunters, another bioorganic weapon created by Umbrella. There are many creatures in Resident Evil, so for this video, we're going to look at the Hunter. Around 10 years before a Hunter was created, they chose a frog as an early test subject and they called it the Lurker. But the results proved to be disappointing. The mutated frog did increase in size and strength, but it suffered from low intelligence something that was not viable for military applications. Because of its increased aggression, there was no way to control it. The T-virus strain at the time was not adequate for creating a bioweapon that would remain under their control, so this was a potential safety risk for the keepers. The Hunter Y or Hunter Gamma series would later have the same problems, but their development went through a different process. It consisted of human DNA, which was bonded with a fertilized amphibian egg that contained the T-virus. They were sometimes called by another name, the Frogger. In Resident Evil 3, a version with claws would make an appearance. Its body would once again resemble a frog, but with no eyes or teeth. Because of this, it would use its large mouth to swallow its prey whole. One factor that makes them too vulnerable is they can only survive in wet environments as they cannot resist dry air or heat. In the year 1981, from a breakthrough in genetic manipulation, the Hunter A series was produced in the Arkley laboratory. Unlike the other versions, this Hunter was created by injecting reptilian DNA into a human embryo and then administering the T-virus as a bonding agent. Their sole purpose was to hunt down any survivors. Unlike the previous subjects, this Hunter was more intelligent, equal to an orangutan, it also developed a hard, keratinized skin, and surprisingly, it was as tough as Kevlar body armor. The company decided to keep one original Hunter A subject and create future clones from it. In the early 1990s, the Arkley Laboratory would produce another bioweapon. It seemed to resemble a Hunter in a small way, but they were labeled as ticks. Their skin had a different texture and color. Along with having antennas, they had sickle-like arms which were used for cutting their prey. This creature was exclusive to the Sega Saturn version of Resident Evil. According to an interview with Yasuhisa Kawamura, who was a scenario writer for Biohazard 3 Last Escape, his original story says that Dr. William Birkin was able to stabilize the T-virus at some point of his research. This led to the creation of the tyrant B.O.W. and the Hunter. But while he was working on his G-virus, the European branches of Umbrella would modify the existing B.O.W.s they would later create the Hunter B. In 1998, the Hunter B was in production. It was a modified version of the Hunter A, but the first specimen turned out to be deformed, and as a result of this, it did not gain the strength of the A models, but it did have improved reflexes, and so they thought it could be useful in some way, so they decided to clone it. At least 20 Bs were ready by September, and as a means of testing them for combat, they were released into Raccoon City. In the same year, William Birkin would work on the Hunter R model. Most of this research took place in his underground laboratory in Raccoon City, but some work was also done in the other facility located on ground level. This model did not get much activity, as they were mainly used for combat testing with the Tyrant R. When William Birkin became infected with the G virus, a bunch of Hunter Rs were released in the facility. While some survivors tried to fight them off, in the end, the Tyrant R was sent in, to kill off any remaining Hunter R's. When Resident Evil 2 was released, the Hunters were absent from the game, but on the Nintendo 64 port, the body of a Hunter R can be found in the laboratory. It only shows up in the second scenario and also includes a file from William Birkin. The file goes over the progress of the Hunter R development. Now, this same room has something very strange. Is it just me, or does this image over here look like a predator? The shape of its head and the location of the armor does appear to be similar, what do you think? Another file was found in Resident Evil Outbreak. It talks about how a few Hunter R's escaped and a few casualties occurred. The researcher who wrote this also shows signs of regret, saying they never should have created the Hunters. It also states that lowering the temperature will cause them to freeze. A smaller version of the Hunter R was also created, but they were never mass produced. This Hunter U had the same firepower resistance as the larger Hunter R. They were only held in storage in Raccoon City, so they never really got much combat testing. 
In 2007, a manga called Biohazard Umbrella Chronicles was released. It was limited to only two issues, but it recounts the fall of the Umbrella Corporation. The story was somewhat short, but it shows Chris and Jill going to a Russian village in search of more information, only to find the village has been infected by a virus and zombies are everywhere. They come across Albert Wesker, who is looking for the virus antibodies. They were stored in warehouses across Russia for safekeeping, but he escapes before a few Delta hunters appear. Most of them are killed by Chris, but later in the story, one of the hunters tries to attack Wesker, but he's able to kill it very quickly, showing he's still a very powerful enemy, even against B.O.W.s. In the novel called Resident Evil Underworld, which is written by S.D. Perry, the hunters are one of the main enemies of the story, appearing in multiple sections. The Hunter Gamma and Hunter Beta series also appeared in the other novels by S.D. Perry. Despite Umbrella creating multiple variations of the Hunter species, it seems the Hunter A model was the most promising version. Even when Umbrella wanted a better model, this one stood the test of time. Albert Wesker would later provide a rival organization with Umbrella's classified data of the prototype Hunter A. They would be responsible for creating the Hunter 2, sometimes called the Improved Hunter. It displayed to be more intelligent than the previous Hunter A model. They implanted a special device on the left side of its head, which also came with an eyepiece, and with the help of an automated surveillance device called a Seeker or Spotter, the Hunter 2 was able to track down its target much easier through the use of a special frequency. The novel of Code Veronica does mention another variation of the Hunter 2. Its skin is now reddish with purple veins. Scales have grown on their body and their eyes were now red. Aside from their physical changes, they function the same way, except now having poison on their claws. The sweeper was meant to go through previously attacked areas and finish off anything that was still alive. There was a subspecies of the Hunter that was very different. They looked like smaller versions of the Hunter Gamma model. They would hunt in packs and mostly rely on darkness for ambushes, but their attack method was different. They would jump on their prey and vomit in their faces. However, they were considered a failed experiment. According to the story in Resident Evil Dead Aim, the Hunter Elite model was more powerful than the standard Hunter. They were developed in a way to surpass all the other versions. This creature was the product of the finest researchers in the European branch of Umbrella. The Hunters would return in Resident Evil Revelations, but they were given a different name, Farfarello, which can also translate to Goblin. This prototype was made by a terrorist group. They took a regular Hunter and injected it with the T-Abyss virus. It grew larger in size and gained increased muscle mass. But one unique thing about it was that it could camouflage within its surroundings, which made it even more dangerous. According to a file in a crash site nearby, they were given a sedative every hour during transport. They could be controlled to some extent, but when they were fully active, their actions were unpredictable. The effect of the drug must have worn off at some time and then they escaped. Resident Evil Revelations 2 did have the Hunter species in the game. They looked similar to the Alpha and Hunter 2 models, but they were larger and walked slowly, but still retained increased agility for running and hopping. The Resident Evil franchise has spawned many video games, comic book stories, and movies, each one telling a different story and introducing new characters and bioweapons. There are so many types of creatures to cover in this franchise. Some of them look humanoid, quadrupedal, and others have entirely new designs. But in almost every situation, it seems, the more dominant species is always the physically weaker one, the human race. And through countless times, Umbrella's plans have been foiled by humans. Despite their obsession for creating the perfect bioweapon, each one has been defeated in different ways, but in the end, it all comes down to intelligence. No matter how big or how strong you make a bioweapon or creature, their survival is dependent on how well they can adapt to the situation. So that covers the hunter in Resident Evil. What is your favorite creature in this franchise? Put it down in the comment section. If you want to see more content like this, then leave a like rating on this video, and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram, so follow me on those platforms. Thanks for watching. My name is Carlos, and I'll see you in the next video.